Hello, I'm John Joe. Welcome to the Lime Ward. Today we are battling Infenzia and versus me. So, right now, Infenzia has chosen this area of land and he's got this island over here, but he hasn't actually taken it yet. So, here we go. Over here, Infenzia has taken a lot of this area and I had this island over here and the choice of down here. In a previous battle, me and Infenzia did go up against each other and I lost just before this one. I lost really badly. And it was really short and quite boring, but he did actually outmaneuver me, and I had more navy than him, but I just didn't have the energy. So right now he's going for an airfield. And so far he's setting up his movements. Generally speaking, I think setting up your structures is more important, but maybe I'm wrong. Invenzi is not doing it, and he is one of the developers of the game, one of the two. But Santos is the other. Anyway, so let's have a look at me. Because I lost with navy last time, I really didn't want to start on this island, so I really wanted to focus on having a ground attack. So I decided to go for a bit of a tank rush that SE2 taught me. I don't know what his other names are. I believe he goes by John Bolton as well. Uh, but he he did this against me once and he outright destroyed me with it. And after that, this is the only way I do tanks now, really. So, yeah, so we've got a, quite a close battle. I'm going to speed up time a bit just to catch up. And if I just quickly turn on Fog of War, he can't see me. I'm going to keep it like this, actually. So... You can see through the fog of war, and I'm just about to come in range. You can see me now because of the red lines here. And my tanks are on the move. So I notice there's mountains here. I can see his units here, so I try to go around them. At this point, and we have some energy, so he's got helicopters. No, he doesn't, actually. They're not helicopters. That's a transport jet. That's going to be a bit easier for me. At this point, he can see my tanks. And I notice these units, so I just decide to go straight for it. I did not want to waste too much time with him seeing my tanks. And he does react. He's got some units coming over this way. I'm going to switch views. So from my point, I can't really see much. These units are invisible to me. His first move, though, is to go for the energy well. He knows, although he can't see it because it's beyond the fog of war. I don't think he can. Nope. So he's predicting this move right now. But that's a pretty good prediction. If I've gone for tanks, I've got energy. I'm going to say it on time. I forgot. So we've got the commandos coming in now towards this area, and I have nothing to defend that. I wasn't expecting commandos so early, but then I should have because, I mean, it is a map that you can jump across. I actually thought he started up in this corner, and I couldn't see any structures, so I decided to come down this way, and I went for the energy well, just because I saw the aircraft. It's important to try and take out the air units. So he does get there. He can see the energy well now. He can also... I don't know. I don't think you can see that one. No. Oh, he's going for that. I just send my tanks up this way instead uh, to try and defend it. So the commanders are pretty much on top of me right now. And my tanks over here are going for that. I switch it over to the airfield, which is good. Um, I don't know if I take it out. I can't really remember. But over here, the energy well does survive. I didn't actually go towards it in the end. I've got some more tanks coming in the back to take out this airfield in case my main three don't. I've already lost one tank. I think I sent four up originally. But there is a lot of this map. There we go. The airfield goes down. That was my biggest threat at this point. So if we have a look at the map, there's a lot of the area going on. But I really didn't want to fight in the waters because I'm not very good at it. So, <laughs> Infenzia is on the defensive already, which was hope what I was hoping for. Because as far as I was aware, Infenzia has beaten me twice in the past. Because there was one a long time ago where Infenzia, I was winning against him on the ground, but he funneled me into a choke point and used a rocket and destroyed my entire army, and I just couldn't come back from it. So, we now have a couple of tanks going straight for the energy well. I think I just did that because I could, but I probably shouldn't have, to be honest, because he, I got rid of his airfield. I know it would stop the tanks, but there's another energy well up here that I'd have to try and take out. It, like, he doesn't have it, but he could have. And he does start building it. More defensive position, which is going to be much easier for him to defend. And my tanks are desperately trying to get over these mountains away from these units. I didn't really have much of an escape route here. <laughs> I knew that if these guys went straight that way, they'd just get caught up in this group here. So I tried to go straight over it, but... Yeah. So, does he take out my energy well? He did. I, I should have checked a bit earlier. So he did take out my energy well, and I had to rebuild it. Which is why I kept these tanks back a bit. I decided to just... Worry about the tanks I've got up here. And after this fight, you know, I took out the airfield and I took out the energy well. I thought that I was pretty much done for. Like, you know, I'd have to keep these tank rushes 
Oh, these tanks are pushing pretty constantly and keep harassing him for this to work. And I wasn't sure if it was going to be able to be doable. So I had to keep on trying to scout. I use this tank as a scout. Tanks are not good for scouting. But we have it going over that way. And it looks like Infenzia can see it pretty well. And he's going to take me on with a SAM unit there. And that's, that is the problem with tanks. They just can't see very well. So even if whether you do an attack and you think you've done good, you might not have done that good. And same vice versa. You might have done really well and not known. But I think that's why I like Fog of War. Because you just don't know what the enemy is up to. So I try and keep the infantry back for defence. The tanks are trying to harass and push. And they're also going to be trying to take in some territory for me. Now these units are going back over the mountains. I do have my tanks trying to go this way. But because they're on an orange command, they're trying to attack the units over here. And I think I must have switched that into a blue command. Yeah, because if that was black command, there we go. It's just a bit delayed, I think. Because if it was, it would have been still trying to capture this territory. But as they come over these mountains here, that should give me a bit more clearing. But because of my energy issues, I wanted to have a backup. And I started to get some artillery going as well. I did keep some producing tanks. So I think it's like half and half, but this one's producing only artillery. And that way it'll give me something to fall back on if the tanks don't really work out well for me. From Invenzia's perspective, he has no idea about the artillery. He's just worried about tanks. And to be fair, I am putting him in quite a defensive position. And I did try and take out this energy well over here with the tank that came up this way, but it just didn't quite work out well. Got taken out before I could really do any damage, which to be fair, it was just one tank. The Infensia does have a group of commandos, along with one infantry unit, going this way, capturing some territory for me. On this side, I, I saw the amount of units there, and I just wanted to have a front line sort of equal so that they fire all at once, and they're not going to be taken out one at a time. There we go, so now I can push forward, and you can see I've got a bit of a better front line where they're all going to be actively shooting when this one decides to. And it just gives me a bit of a better defensive position at his place, I guess. But yeah, there's quite a lot of infantry in this so they are stopping my progression, even if I wanted to progress. But then I realised I've got two tanks over here, taking on my one there, which should have changed this to an orange command, I would have thought. See, it's better when I watch my own videos, because then I can criticise a bit more without feeling bad. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, we've got a lot of tanks here that just went down and didn't really do much either for me. They took out his army and slowed down his army, which is pretty much the only value I got from that. But because of these mountains here, the artillery force that I've got, if these units try to cross it, I'll have the advantage, and that was kind of what I was hoping would happen. This battle did happen quite a little while ago, not too long ago, so I can't really remember what happened. But over here, I have some units there. His commandos are going up around this section of the map, and it looks like they're digging in for a little bit. But we have a couple of infantry down here as well. Over here, my tanks did manage to break through these, but I've only got two left. And I th think I just went over that way. I don't know what happened to the tank that went here. Maybe I didn't actually go there, but I spotted it. Anyway, my tanks are moving over there, and I can see the... The energy well, I probably couldn't see the defense units. But as you can see, I put a strike command on it and I realized they're in defense, so do I I don't know if I react. Yeah, I do. But because I left the strike command on, they do go a bit too far forward and he does get taken out. But I have my backup plan. And tanks, sometimes people use infantry to meet shield for the artillery. But because I was so heavily invested in tank units. I decide to just keep it as a mix and I use my tanks for the defense and tanks are much tankier than infantry, go figure, but they are a lot more expensive. So the other hand is I can just make a move around and do other things with them, but the infantry is something I needed to try and pick up, which I did end up building some, but I'm struggling with eco a little bit. There you go, Fenzi is being pushed back once again, the artillery are coming in and the tanks, I don't know if it was... a best decision to pull back right now. He does only have two tanks, but he could have tried taking some out before they build up in numbers. It wouldn't have done too much, but might have weakened it enough for a later attack, but they have four tanks coming in. I don't actually know if you can see that. Let's have a quick look. 
Yeah, he probably can see all this. Uh, no, he can't, actually. He can see two tanks, but he might have seen them earlier when the tanks were a lot closer. So, there we go. On the other hand, it's important to note that he does have a navy yard, and he's got infantry units going across here with transport boats. He does have this land already. So he's already expanding onto other islands, which should help bring up his eco, and he might be able to save this island here. Down here, is he doing anything else? He's taking these out of the defensive mode. And he has these units coming down this way. And I do have a barracks here as well myself. And that was building commandos. As you can see, it's a white jacket there. So that is a commando unit in production. And these guys are going to move up here. These were my plan for a bit later. Maybe to sneak in around the back. And as we can see right now, Benzi has put up a blue line here. So his units take formation against my army that's moving in. And my tanks take the front line, taking the brunt of the force. As my artillery shoot over the top. I wish they'd shoot more interesting units than some units, but... You know, kind of shoot over the top. They're at least holding this army back while they take on the sand unit. But on the other hand, I have another group coming in. So this is wave number two. And yeah, they're just streaming in numbers. And I've, I've only really got four factories right now. And two barracks. So I'm not doing too badly for that. And I do just leave these artillery here and make my tanks go this way to take on some eco structures. Because it will split up his army, allowing these to either progress maybe destroy something or he'll have to let these tanks do what they want and destroy something so i tried to force a decision out of him i think he made the right call to take the tanks on and let my artillery do what they want because they're kind of slow so it doesn't really matter i've got some more tanks coming in and they are also going to go this way i don't know if i leave that on i think i change it actually i think i put a circle command there. i can't really remember just so i can avoid the defense there we go. So I am expanding. I've got quite a good eco setup right now. Let's have a look at eco. I'm on 510. And Infensia is on 484. And to be fair, considering he's been putting up a lot of defense right now. And he's been put under a, a ton of pressure. I'm surprised the difference isn't bigger. I would have thought that my eco would have been a lot higher. I've stopped him from expanding in this direction. I've done a lot of damage. But he's still been able to keep up with me, relatively speaking with the eco side of it. So yeah, I've got the blue command here and they're just going to avoid this defensive line here instead of putting a strike command. So they just sit there away from anything that can shoot them and destroy it. And the best way to tackle a defense is not to go through it, but to go around it. So I think that's what I do. I can't really remember. I'm basing it off of what I would do now as I speak as if I was actually playing the battle. So Inventia goes for a defensive line in the mountains, but I don't know if that's a great idea because although yes, you get the defensive bonus but if I keep my tanks back in infantry my artillery would just fire into them and they'd be getting three kills now as you can see I got my tanks rolling over this mountain section here and I can probably take these on that was my plan but Infensia is not a silly player he knows what he's doing he knows what I'm doing as well so yeah he's bringing back those units there which is a good call because there's nothing shooting them yet but I have more units coming in and my barracks over there is doing all right, but we've got some commandos over here that do have a, a bit of uh, building power in that section. They have the territory already. Infensia is doing all right over here. He now has some really well-protected gas because I have absolutely nothing that can cross the water just yet. But now I feel like my units are going to get beaten. You can see that the units are really close to me and because my army is mostly artillery, I really want to have that range. Otherwise, you're going to lose. But my tanks take out a structure in the mountains over here. And as you can see, my units are getting taken out. Now, I want it to retreat. But with artillery, if I just pulled them back, they'd, they'd just die. Uh, so I wanted to keep them firing. I pulled back which ones were safe already. And that way, I get to kill a few things, potentially, as I go. And I took out another structure there. I didn't expect that. But yeah, so these tanks were really destroying the structures there. And I still have two here and one there. That's three tanks as a little bit of a harassment. Yeah, I think I should have just progressed through this way and took on the navy yard over in that section. What am I doing over on my side? Have I got anything else? I mean, I do have the potential to have a city here. And a town, and I forgot about these units. I always leave one unit somewhere, or some units somewhere. 
Yeah, so my just my decision to bring them back here was just because I wanted them to build up in numbers. I've done a lot of damage, but if I push too early, I'm never going to build up that amount of army. So what I do instead is because I know I want to attack this location here, I bring my units down this way to capture the territories. Because when I've got more units here, I'll send them this way, and then I can surround his area. So that was my thought process in this section of the game. Oh, and I've just bought. A lot of you guys watching are usually not subscribed. It's about 60% people who watch and not subscribe. So I'm just going to... I haven't said it in a while. So, hey, would you like to subscribe? Uh, I do this quite a lot. So, <laughs> thank you. And uh, you're awesome. As we continue, I'm still pushing up some units this way. But you can see Infenzia in the shadows. Little switch. Is actually trying to conquer some other lands. By the looks of it, he's got a boat here which doesn't actually have any units in. He might have just been trying to scout me to find out whether I have actually got any form of navy. So, he's getting some territory there. I wonder if he's trying to build a trade route, actually, because he's got... Is that a trade route there? I don't think it is. I think that's connected to this one. <clears throat> I don't think you can build a docks because you'd need the town there. So, no, I think my idea there was out the window. So, anyway... I do have some commandos, if you've noticed, just building up over here, and I was pretty sure he couldn't see them, so I kind of want to check. You definitely can't see them, they're invisible. So, yeah, my plan was to try and build up some units behind this base so that when I do the attack, I can bring them in. Surprise them from two different angles. Hence why they're on a blue command, so they don't start capping anything. I don't want them to be revealed. On this side, though... I do try to progress towards him, and he does try and dig in at this point, and two of my units stray off, because I didn't spot this, but Infenzia looks like he did. Uh, so, yeah, three of my units are now straying off, but these commandos are easily going to take those guys out, especially defended in the mountains. As you can see, I've got a few more commandos going that way. I didn't notice something this way. But yeah, so one unit still goes off that way and it captures this land for me. I did find that a bit confusing when I spotted it later. So you can see I'm setting up these circle commands to build up a few numbers in um, units and numbers in this section. And I wanted to see this little channel here because I didn't want any units getting through. And if I did, I'd see what he's got in the ocean. So it's just sort of intel gathering based on what I see from his movements. If I don't see much movements. I should be fine. So over here, I have decided to switch into air units. And I know these probably can't reach very far. I'm pretty sure they can only reach up to this location here. But that was kind of the plan. Mostly for defense right now. Or later on, I could build airstrips over here and send them that way. That was kind of what my plan was. Because if I build them here and then Invenzia pushes back, I could lose them. And I don't want that to happen at all. But then it did panic me when this happened, because if I'd built them in the mountains, he probably wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> We've got a tank coming in this way, which, if, if you just look at the angle here, yeah, you know, it's going that way. And, he, and I notice it, and I send some units straight up towards it, and he's got his movement going that way. And the worst thing is, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know about this location here. No, he can't see this at all. So he has no idea it's there, and he goes straight towards it. Anyway, a <laughs> little rant over. There we go. So I've got my commandos. They decide to go straight for the energy well over here, but uh, partly because I saw the tank. Um, but yeah, they didn't really work out so well. But I do have a fair amount of units set up over here and over on this side now. And that tank does get destroyed by the strikers. There was no point in keeping them on the ground. I may as well use them. Hopefully he doesn't spot it. If I kill it quick enough... It will go away, but he probably spotted the airfield. In fact, I want to check. Did he actually spot that airfield? He didn't. Otherwise, it would still be there. So, that's quite lucky. He might not have actually noticed that I'd done that. Because if I had taken that out after he's, when he's looking away, it would have disappeared. And he wouldn't know that I had strikers. We do have some cruisers coming around this way. Which I did spot, and it did concern me a little. Which is why I moved my units... Kind of over in this direction. Because I didn't want them to shoot in and there. And I, I have one random artillery in the mountain here. I don't know why. I think he just got a bit bored. 
And I was going to attack on two fronts, but I saw that there was a lot, like, just a load of artillery here, and I thought it may as well just swing them around into the middle. Because Infensia has got two defensive lines here, and Stam stuck in the middle. So I think he panicked. He might have seen the airfield, judging by the fact that he's got quite a few Sam. So if he saw the airfield, he should have known that that's out of range. So I think he should have been fine, and I, I probably would have not worried too much about um, air units, because I've got quite a lot of ground forces, and that would have been my main concern. But then I think, you know, you can't risk it, because if I did that, and then the, the couple of airstrips, you know, that would have been end of. But I didn't want him to kill off my structures, because like, I've got nothing to defend with now. I've only just started building them. I know I need the ocean now, so I send in my strikers to take these out. And right now, Benzia does switch his mind, change his mind, and not go for my energy well over here. He decides to do something else. He doesn't want to lose his cruisers, so he does end up retreating. But if he'd done that, he would have been out of range of my strikers. But I'm kind of glad that he did go back that way, because I, I don't want to lose my uh, energy wells anymore. So yeah, my main force does just come through this side a bit, and then I can take on the defense here from the side, which is good. And I, I kind of want to look at the economy once again. So I still haven't gone for much economy structures. Actually, I haven't gone for any so far. And he still has some units just over here. So let's go back to the battle over here, and we'll have a look at the economy. So I'm on 600, okay, which hasn't really increased much. But Infensia has been expanding the map, so what is he at? Watch, switch back. There we go. Infensia seems to be on 600 as well. <laughs> oh, I'm on 690. And he's on 600. Maybe I was get, making a mistake. Anyway, so I do one big push now. This was what I was hoping to be the final battle, taking Infensia off of this main island. And I was hoping that, you know, I wouldn't have to fight a navy battle. I wouldn't have to do anything else after this, I could finally say that I'd be in Fenzia on this island map by avoiding the navy. But unfortunately, uh, he doesn't give up, so we'll have to see how he reacts and how, it, how this battle goes out. So we got these this army moving over the mountains, which does make it a lot slower for me because of mountains blowing down your vehicles. But he has abandoned this factory over here. He's even turned it off by the looks of it. And his units are escaping into defensible positions over here. And I haven't really shown you what's on the other island yet for Infensia. So we do have the energy well. We have a town. So he is building up his eco. And he's pretty much captured this whole territory. He also has this island here where he's going for barracks. Spreading out across the island. And he's pretty much already got that island as well. He hasn't got this island here yet. And he did scout this area but hasn't got it either. And, I don't know, does he have anywhere else? There is another little island over here? No. So, he still has quite a few places to expand to. And I'm not really ready to do that, because even in the Navy, I only have submarines. I can't cross the water with submarines. So that's something I could have done better, but I saw cruisers over here, if you remember. Sorry if you heard that, that was my dog shaking. Anyway, so, yeah, so he built cruisers, so I built submarines because I thought that they'd be able to take them out. Probably not the best of counters, because cruisers in large numbers can actually do quite well against submarines. They don't need to worry about detection because of the amount of numbers they have, and they just, they're just they just far more powerful than destroyers. Not necessarily effective, but when submarines counter cruisers, it is a bit of a problem. But I suppose the air units are where you come in with that one. So... My units are focused on the mountains right now. I kind of didn't want to move too fast. I probably could have, because I could have been taken out while they're repairing. I didn't think of that at the time. But either way, I just wanted to claim some territory. And it also gives me time to get in some air units. So I've got an airstrip in the mountains here. I've got an airfield coming up. And I really wanted to focus on the defense of this island. I deemed it worthy. If I could defend it at all times, I could take over each island. Slowly, but surely. I mean, they are... That one's biggest, I suppose, after this. And then, I suppose, this one's the most valuable, and then that one, and so on and so forth. 
But I can just keep on going with that. And it's important to note, he is moving over to this island now. So Infensia nearly has the rest of the map, while I've been focused on this section. And he does have a fair amount of income coming in. So he's got 300 per minute actually being generated for him to use. But 745 coming in per minute. Why not? 780, so he's actually keeping up with me when it comes to economy. But I've actually got yet less to, I don't know, utilize and use every minute. Less is going into my capital. Bella, stop. My dog's going nuts trying to bury something in a bag, in a bag of socks. Anyway, <laughs> so I send my tanks this way, but no, no, I just send everything in at every angle. And yeah, my tanks are just pushing through this one section. Luckily, they're all focused on one area. And the cruisers do come in to help, and they're firing over this structure here, trying to stop my tanks, which is going to be very good. But I also finally have some strikers here. We saw them come in earlier, and now they're going to move in and help me against these Navy units. After seeing them together, I'm just glad he didn't have any missile ship, because the cruisers are probably going to help a lot of the defense here. Here come the strikers, two of them literally on top of each other. But the SAM units are a bit of a concern. I think I did consider attacking earlier, but because of the SAM, I um, thought I'd wait until my army dealt with some of them. And now the strikers have taken out the last of the SAM units, and these cruisers now are not going to defend. They are going to run away all the way over here, probably because of this trade route here. So we have a city down here with a trade route. He's building boats. But this area is nearly ready. Oh, it has been completed now, apart from this one. So it looks like he's going to move south into the other island down there. On the other hand, we do have some sea units over here. And we've got the cruisers that have retreated earlier. And he has a lot of energy in this location. There's three energy wells just here. So that will help greatly with his navy fight. And he's got an energy well there, one there. He hasn't actually got the structures on them yet though, but he does have good ink eco, so he probably could do that pretty fast. There isn't too much going on there, but if you look at my energy production, I don't really have much. Yeah, I've only got two wells. So, and they're kind of vulnerable to the navy units. I have got protection for that. But all my submarines are pretty much all in one place right now, and I did want this energy well here, so I had to try and make sure that was protected. Which is, luckily, still got the strikers here that can actually reach that. But then these ones will be sent there too, so that's what I said about defense. I do have an energy well here, and I don't like this energy well here, because, well, any sea units going past here will spot it, and be able to, uh, he'll be able to destroy it quite easily. So I was a bit concerned about building that. <clears throat> After taking him from this island, though, I stopped production because I don't want to be wasting any money. I still have the air units being produced because I still want to have good defense. But I want to keep my land units for invasions, and I don't need to waste my per, month, uh, per turn income from having such a large army that I'm not using. Because I've got a lot of structures I could take. I've literally left him with the territory on this island. Well, move over. But yeah, there's, there's a city, there's even trade routes that I could use, and I haven't built any of it. So that's why I've turned off a lot of my production. And now my eco should be a lot better. Apparently not. I've still got quite a few air units being produced. There's this territory here as well, which I haven't taken yet, which these guys should be doing, really. And I keep the commandos here because I thought that if I do, I could cross this island with the commandos instead. Because the Navy units came this way, I didn't want to build any sort of Navy yard. I assumed that he'd be able to pick up on that and, you know, bot it and destroy it before I could do much about it. Over here, though, unfortunately for Impenzia, he is trying to take over this island here from this location. And just by sheer chance, I have some submarines in the waters over here. Though he is just transferring some extra units from here to here first. But I do notice the shortest path is from here to here, so this is how I try and transfer across. 
I will probably speed up the match if there isn't too much going on. But I have a lot of submarines here. They're going to trap this one boat. And he does manage to release those units apart from one. I think one went down with those. But these cruisers over here are just pushing through. And my other set of submarines that came up through the other way have managed to stop the boat on this side from getting across. Alright, maybe not. They did release one sand unit. Which unfortunately I can't do much about when I've only got submarines. But on this side, I just wanted to focus on some boats. I wanted to get some units across the water as fast as possible. Especially here. Because I just spotted that he's he hasn't done it yet. Until now. Anyway, I wanted to chase down those cruiser ships because I know I have the advantage in this scenario. Or at least I hope I have the advantage. <laughs> and, um, yeah, because if he builds up in numbers with those guys, it's going to be a lot harder for me to win the, win the uh, oceans. So, even though he's only got one SAM unit here, I'm sending over an artillery. For some strange reason, I think I struggle actually taking this island. And now that I'm watching from this side, I, I want to know why. <laughs> anyway, I do spot the Navy Yard, and I've got my submarines right in place there, but he does have... I think those are missile ships, actually. They're not destroyers. But I think because of all my strikers earlier, he switched into missile ships, and now I've got submarines, so I think I got a bit lucky on that. I do think an element of luck did do a lot for this game. on my side, at least at the beginning. And he does have some cruisers left over there. He's doing something with them. And he he's getting ready to jump across this water here. On this side of the water, though, I'm getting prepared for an attack. He's not ready to jump anyway. He's only got one boat left over in this section right now. And my submarines are right there. I want to know if he can see me. No, he has no idea that I've got submarines blocking this exit right now. I heard something. Maybe not. I didn't know he's got a sub pen here though. So I'm moving my submarines inward. It, it's kind of weird seeing the commands move without any units there. There we go. So I've set my submarines to go off in towards this section of the map. Let's turn the wall back on so we can kind of see how it's going. The cruisers are making a fair bit of smoke there, so I can't see too many submarines, but. There's more than enough to take on this section, and I managed to take out that navy. But we have that boat coming down, and I think that is coming for this section here, which it is. That's how you get some extra units there then. But that is only one boat, but then from this location, you can get a lot of units by really quick. Over here, is he taking this island yet? Nobody's about to. The submarines have dealt with that section now, and it's going straight for this energy well here, because I assumed he'd have it, and if not, then I could stop him from building there by taking the land. And we have four infantry units and one SAM here, and my artillery are going to probably destroy the SAM before it becomes relevant, but I have stopped him taking the land. I did not know that I was the first to take land on this island, because even though I've got four artillery there now, my main focus wanted to take over this island here, not this one here. Which unfortunately meant that I'm going to lose this section here with only four artillery. But I am also working on my eco. You can see I've got a town gutter, I've got some industry, and there's that one being built as well. So I, I am working on building that up, and I'm hoping to get a city there. That's my main objective for now. Has he got anything set up here? He's just got his units across, so we're not going to worry too much over there. Over on this side, I do spot some units going over around this way, taking over some territory. These two units there are stopping my artillery taking the territory, and they're just going to carry on moving because I'm not watching this area right now. And at this point, I don't want to progress too far because Infendia has spotted me. And if I'm, I, think he, I think I knew that he spotted me and he was positioning his units. I certainly couldn't see this airfield, and yeah, he's coming in for me right now, and 
but the, the good thing is, like I said earlier, this is a short crossing, so we can get units across really fast. I set up a defensive line. It might have been a little too late. I could have done that a lot earlier. So I changed it into an orange line. Just in case one dies, they move forward and stuff like that. And they won't take fatigue damage. Because when you're already being attacked, it's too late to set up defenses at that point. You need to have them ready before you get there. And here, I've got a submarine still there, just hitting this one struck one unit. And I could have sent this one down too. But I've only got three units there, and one of them's really damaged. I think I was struggling with energy. Am I? Yeah, it's on me. So I've only got three energy right now, and I'm not really sure why. Well, it's probably my boat's taking a lot of energy, but I only have... I still have two energy wells. Should be fine. But as you can see, he's sending in his infantry units across this way, and as my units build up in numbers, the artillery are able to shoot over each other, and they've taken them out pretty well. We've literally got a pile of dead bodies on the side here, which is n not a good look, to be honest. But I don't mind, they're not my units. And nonetheless, I decide to bring in some strikers to sort of have a look around, to be honest. And I think I just attached them to this defensive line. And now, I can push forward and see what's out there. Over on this section, I've got my submarines circling around up there. What I didn't notice was what's happening here. And Fenzia is going back for the main island. And he's going to be progressing this way, straight into the back of me. And I've got no production here. And while he could do quite a lot of damage here, he's got units on a circle command with this blue, so they're not going to be taking the territory. Meaning I won't notice for a while. And he's setting up a large defensive line. I know you need a large defensive line in this area. But I don't think it's worth it to do it, even here. Not unless you've got artillery in the mountains. Because I'm just going to focus in one section and just... By chance, it's right in the middle of these two defensive lines. And I have a lot of air units. I also added interceptors to it because I saw an airfield. Um, but they've also got really good visibility. So they can see even some stealth units pretty well. And then Fenzia has some submarines in the area. And they were trying to take out my boats. And he's, he's sending quite a lot of units across to this island here. And my strikers are clearing up this area pretty well. Just for my artillery to come in and finish off the job. The bombers have taken off. I'm not sure where they're off to, but we have some stand there taking on these bombers. Oh, they're literally right here is where they're going. And they... To be fair, I do have a few sam units here. I don't think they're going to survive much longer. I probably could have kept my interceptors in this area as well. That could have been a way to do all that, but they are down, so. Infenzia is still building some submarines in this area. It looks like I found the one that was over here, but this sub pen is still producing these submarines and they're coming this way, which is stopping my transport boats taking units across. I didn't mind too much. I've pretty much got the force in there that I wanted. And now, Infenzi is going to try and rush me, I think, with these infantry in this area. They're pushing in, literally pincering me. Whereas over here, he has now even captured this island. And even some of my island. And I, I still didn't notice this, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it. Whereas over here, we have a lot of artillery firing through. And... Pretty much right now, they're just slowing me down. Because these are artillery in the mountains, I'm not going to be moving fast if you stream them in one by one. And that's going to give Infenzia a lot more time to deal with me at this point. But my submarines are coming down to take on this structure, because I must have spotted it as I went by, but didn't actually see it. And now, I'm trying to bring some units across here. He's got some industry being set up, which is actually kind of like really close to me. It's quite, quite risky, I think. I definitely would have built up this area a lot more first. However, I want that island too, and I do have a plan for it as well. He's bringing a lot of units in, but 
luckily I left some commandos here that I completely forgot about. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have spotted this either. And it has that attack happening. And Fenzia is also attacking my town on the other side. Which I didn't notice. <laughs> because of the attacks going on here. And me trying to push up in the north in this section here. There's quite a lot going on at this point. And I wanted to take this island as well. And I've got some submarines. If I had just moved these submarines here. Just there. That would have made it a lot easier to deal with. Nonetheless, I keep my SAM back a bit. Protect these structures because they're more important than the army. And even if they attack the army with their units, it will still be fine. Because they'll hit them. But Infensia submarines are coming in through here. They're going to take on my boats. And my well, boats don't really stand a chance at this point. And it's kind of annoying because I wanted these boats here. And this one went there. But the other two didn't. They just sat there and decided... They're going to go down, and that's because this line was set up wrong, and this one must have just been in enough range for this guy to get through. But over here we have one artillery trying to take over the territory, but Apentia spots it and blocks it. And these submarines are going to try and stop those boats there. I did spot these boats, um, and I think that's what alerted me to this area here. And I started producing units again. I might have started producing them just to get units over here, but what I was meant, what I need to do now is switch them back over. That's when I notice it. Over here, the attack has been voided, but Infensia does have quite a few units he could also still send to me, but I think I must have taken out the transport boats. These ones look like new ones. And he's trying to bring in some more units down here, especially as I've shown the strikers. He thinks some are in range. So he's got these units there. And I've got two commando jets, and I've still got this line up. Over on this section, I have spotted it now, and I've got my units going back. I did send them quite far back, just in case. But I wanted them to build up here, so I can protect this. And I've got a choke point here, and then I can push back after. Up in these mountains, though, and Penzio put up two lines. I noticed this one doesn't have much artillery on, so that's the way I decided to focus on. And also I have vision on this side so I can see a bit more of what's going on if anything sneaky happens. And the small amount of units here that we're able to overcome the units I'm sending in. Did a pretty good job over there. So at this point, Infensia is really trying to find anywhere to exploit on this island to be able to push back. And I think my decision to put air units in these mountains here, away from the ocean, I've got good coverage of the entire island almost. I think that was a really good call because these guys are just going to sit there and protect the entire island. I mean, they're not invincible, nothing ever is. But it was a pretty good way to defend an island. Now, Infensia pulls back from this. There's only two units here. I set up these commands here to hold them off. When some more units come in, I can then just delete these lines and they'll move in with them. But I don't think Infensia was confident with the infantry that he had. But because they're streaming in one at a time, I think this would have been the best time to try and grab them. And over there, I think Infensia really wants to keep hold of this island here. And I am slowly progressing through this area right now. As the defensive line gets pushed in, you can see one artillery comes in and places down. This is the problem with the black lines. The units don't try and fight on their way to their location. So I get some free damage in on them when they're not with the bonuses. I am producing a city right now, or constructing a city. Now, Fenzia is going for a city in this section here, and he has all the industry required for it. I've lost my town over here, which is unfortunate, but I am planning to progress further once these are full. So, as we're about 50 minutes into the match, we'll have a look at the eco. I'm on 1,004. Infensia is on 1,264, so Infensia is doing really well for the eco side of things right now. 
I didn't realize, but he had a higher eco than me. But there, there is a lot of eco structures, which I think he's surviving on. And I am about to get a city going, so I will quickly check just after that. Anyway, my units built up in numbers. I've started pushing them back through. I didn't want to underestimate his army, so I waited for my units to come by. Over on this section, I've got commandos over there, and I'm just about to find out what's there, because if I have a quick look at my point of view, I have no idea what's there. So I wanted to check what's there. I knew he had something there because of the way he sent his units in, but I was hoping it would be relatively undefended. Obviously, I was wrong. So as these come in, they fly directly over these missile ships, which is kind of lucky for Infenzia. But I kept them in there because it doesn't matter if I call them back, I'm still going to probably lose one. I may as well find out what's in this section here, but unfortunately I kind of met a lot of anti-air and I lost all of my commando transferring aircraft, so I decided to just switch out into this. And I did see what was there, and it did make me very concerned. Over in this side, I could see pretty well with my submarines checking out the location. And I was okay with this. I thought that I could probably take that out. But I will keep my production up and keep sending those across that way. Over here, Infenzi has set up a new defensive line, which is slightly curved. Which makes it a lot harder for me to take out unless I go for one of the edges, which I didn't necessarily do. As you can see, these units being fired in from multiple angles. And I saw some units are following closely behind just in case. But I didn't want to build any more some units in case there wasn't any more aircraft. I didn't want to over invest. But I still have some submarines dotted around that. And I thought that if I could take out this area just as I'm focused here. I've got production here. So I thought that that might be quite a good thing to do. Even if I lose this area in the long run, I would still have gained this one. So I keep trying to put a pressure on two different islands. I am definitely more focused on this one. But I've even got my submarines moving through, but I forgot about them. I think it's more energy usage I'm worried about. It does send in an attack from this location here, but I just bring in my, my strikers. And I call them off because of these missiles coming in here. And my commandos are there now, so they can defend against this one boat that's coming in, but I didn't have to worry too much. He called it back. And once again, I'm making a push for these structures here with these artillery. I have five artillery in this area, one still coming in though. So I suppose it's a 4v4. We've got one ground unit there as they slowly walk past each other, but that's a commando versus infantry and the commando just didn't really keep up that. Commandos have low health, but they're high damage, so they're like glass cannons. Over in this section, Infenzia abandons the defensive position after it looks like I took out this side of it. And he's bringing them in straight at the side, which, due to my unit's positions, it's going to be hard for me to survive. So, I left them to it because I might be able to take out at least one structure, and that would be worth it to me. Even if it is only a barracks. But I don't even know if I actually get to destroy that structure. But he does have a line of about seven or eight artillery there. And we've got another one moving down this way. So Fenzio is doing quite a heavy pushback right now. And it looks like he's still concerned about my air units. He's building some SAM up. Which is completely understandable. I've presented quite a lot of them. I do have my city now. So let's have a quick look at the eco. I've got 1,300. And we'll look at the here. It's not changing. There we go. 1,300 versus 1,100. That is quite a bit of a difference. I have caught up a little bit. And I think it's why I'm taking back this territory here, which is helping me. And I'm, I've taken some of this area here from him. And I'm taking over more land in the... What land? I'm taking over more territories in the ocean. But Infendi is about to switch that as well because we, he's got another city coming in now. I could also build this town again. I don't know if I do, but I have access to it once again. Infendi has built this defensive line. Now, he's not trying to attack me here. He's just trying to slow me down, which is probably a good idea. 
as the defensive line will just take it that little bit longer for me to take him out. And Benzia does defend this island really well. And I'm unable to take him out there as well. So he's pushing me back once again on that island. He's pushing me back here, which was highly concerning. So I start building some more factories. I was concerned, but I'm pretty sure these strikers reach that location. So even if he does have quite a bit of sand, I can still defend here pretty well. I probably would have risked those strikers in that location just to keep up with the ownership of these factories. I wouldn't want to lose that. And I do have three energy wells right now. You can see that I've got a third one. That's there. I probably should have acquired this one a bit earlier. It doesn't look like that I do. I've got some submarines there. They spotted this ship, but I don't think they're really doing much else. I could go off and take out that structure, uh, the navy yard, but I don't think I know it's there. Anyway, I do try and sit back. I don't want to put up a defense in the mountains because I'll start getting attacked and then they just do the same as what I did to him. I send in some SAM units because he doesn't seem to be interested in that and that's also partly an accident. But I wanted my, my units to build up a bit numbers before they attack, which I probably should have sent in the attack now. But I was also looking over here because Impenzia has built on this island as well and he's got some production there which is coming over now and he's still got quite a few units there so I've been focused on the bottom side of that map. And he's sending in the, the SAM units first, which is good because I'm sending in my air units first. Which is my defense on this island, so... I don't know, he's got quite a few SAM units there, to be honest. I'm probably going to take a few losses in this part. I did take out a SAM almost instantly, though, but I've also lost a striker already. Another striker goes down for another SAM. But now that I've got more units in the area, they're being wiped out. And they're also crossing the water and taking out the units on the land there. I did take out the boat, and this also prompts me to do something else. So over here, we're pushing forward. Uh, only a little bit. So no, I'm not. I think I'm just waiting there casually. But anyway, I've got these submarines going that way and I kept three here just in case of this choke point I wanted to see what was going on there and be able to do something about it but now I've spotted what's happening over here and I send off my artillery in one direction pushing up forward to hopefully defend this this area I mean there's a lot going on there I'm running low on energy and I'm not really sure why what is going on I don't know. I think I've just got a few Navy units running around. Oh, no, it's not. It's my air units. Yeah, they're quite expensive to run, I'll be honest. And over there, we do have a rocket, which is how I'm planning to take out this section of the map. I know it's got a lot of SAM units there, so I didn't want to use these bombers, but they do have a purpose, which I will explain a little bit later. Well, I won't explain. I'll try and show you. But something I did miss, I sent in my aircraft over this way and my artillery straight up, but I didn't send anything to the right. And these artillery pushing in from this side and they're taking out this structure here, which um, it, 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 it's not acceptable. <laughs> I've got three structures here. One goes down on this side and I should be winning this fight and I still lost a structure. I was a bit delayed. I need to be a bit more focused on... The battle's going on all over the map. Luckily, I did seem to save the structures, but I do only have six artillery left in the area. Whereas in Fenzia, as you can see, has four factories in production and at least a barracks left over. Let's have a look at what he actually has. That is what he actually has. So he is slightly higher in production than me because he's got the infantry. On the other hand, he does need a lot of Sam if he wants to take me out. And I decide to go for two barracks, which does put the odds in my favour again for this island. And for now, he doesn't seem to be worried about doing it. Oh, he does. Look at this. He's got an attack going in on my energy well. 
And he's bringing those boats in really fast and my cruisers are trying to get in there. But I did just build another energy well lucky for me. We'll switch this to my perspective and we do have a group of units here. Just as I was bringing in units to the centre of the island. So these guys are going to go all the way back once I spot that. And it looks like he's taking the territory there as well. He's going to push him through this way. He's probably going to go for my city to be honest. But my cruisers do go in there to try and take out these boats and stop his attack. But my subs have spotted that little section there. Does he have anything else going on right now? Because he seems a bit distracted. He's building up in this section. But I don't think he's too worried. He has set up a trade route now, which is going to be really good economy for him. Which I do want to keep an eye on this, because although Infendia is scattered across the map, it looks like he's losing, but his economy is saying a different story. So he's got 1,467, uh, whereas I have 1,499. Yeah, I'm a little bit above him. But he has a trade route... And he is scattered across the map, but he's keeping up with me really well when it comes to economy. Which, in a game like this, where I did kick him off the main island, got rid of him in the first location, to keep up with me from that, it must be quite hard. And he's doing it really well. My cruisers are trying to just take out any units they can in the area there. And i got some units left over in this section, so I'm going to bring them in back from this section. But I think that was just something I did. I don't think I actually noticed what was going on here. It looks like I've just left them to it. Up in this section, I have lost the battle there. I think I actually retreated and I've brought these units back, ready to build up once again. But down here, we still have my strikers. I think that's what my plan's going to be. Is He's bringing these units over the mountains, which is quite slow. I'll probably send my strikers there, so I'll let my energy build up first. And I have my rocket being built over here to take on this left-hand side of the map. From Infendia's perspective, we have the trade route set up, and he's building up some units in the ocean, and he's probably going to try and bring them in somewhere close by. I've got my bombers taken off now. My air units are in the air. I think they're going this way, yep. So Fenzie's got two units over here, as we saw earlier, but my strikers are going to be the ones to take them out. And it looks like he is going directly for the energy well here. But the amount of air units I have are going to make quick work of that. But I still needed to pay more attention down there, which you'll probably see a little... There we go. You see something coming in now. Just as I call back the air units, one boat still makes it into this location and drops off some units in the mountains. There we go. Over in this section, he's doing another attack on the other side, which is coming towards my rocket. I don't think he sees it yet. But he is in a prime location to do that. And because I had to send my units to respond to that attack in the south, my northern defense is sort of bailing and my strikers haven't been able to defend it. So I've been losing. I've lost a couple of structures by the looks of it. And Fenzia is bringing his units down, but I have got my strikers coming in now. And my energy is actually suffering quite a lot right now. So he is. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to run these aircraft over the top of his army here. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen for long. And I'm going to lose another structure in this section too. But I do have a lot of money saved up because I've been focused in on everything that Mpenzi has been throwing at me. I've actually been forgetting to build stuff. Because I don't usually save up money. But that one artillery here was able to take on this energy well. And it looks like he's going for this as well. If Infendia spotted this, he could take on the city. And I've just completely ignored it. Now, I've got units that could deal with it just here and here. And although I've got strikers in this area. And enough energy to use them, it looks like. 
I am struggling with the actual production and they're deciding not to take off. But a lot of my forces are coming down this way to deal with the invasion that's coming through on the um, it, west side of the map. Not the east. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I noticed that the trade route was set up, so I've sent in the three that was over here in this direction to prevent him from actually building up any trading boats. As you can see, he still hasn't got any because my submarines have taken them out and he hasn't noticed yet. I've actually been preventing his economy from building up as well. The rocket does come in, lands and hits the city there and reason I needed some bombers which unfortunately didn't happen at this point because I think I lost them or well, they must have been active somewhere else was because I was going to send them in after to try and take on the city. I don't actually know where my bombers went. <laughs> they have literally disappeared. But anyway, I'm out of energy, which means I can't really defend from the Navy attacks. This does seem to be usually what happens to me, and it was what I was worried about at the beginning when I said I didn't want to fight him via Navy. I wanted to fight him on the ground. Which, Inventia is really going to do well against me. I've, I've lost two of my energy wells. So, I've only got two left, or three left, with this one here. But why have I got 150 storage? Is that an actual energy storage site? I don't know. Three energy bars should be 90 storage of energy. I can't see where I've got another energy well or anything, so... I don't know. Either way, I am sending my navy around the side of this little mountain here. And they're just going to use their cannons to try and weaken what's coming out right now. So my logic was I could invade later if those just stay there and keep shooting. On the other hand, Infendia thinks he can get through on this side here and take out another energy well. This is how he's trying to win, by the way. He's trying to stop my energy production. He's just going to keep harassing in little locations, taking out my energy well, forcing me to rebuild them. Otherwise, I would probably lose. But as you can see, this one artillery is still here. And look at how damaged my city is. This is how long it took me to realize something was going on there. Because there was just one single unit. Sometimes a single unit can do just as much damage as an entire army. Nonetheless, those air units did save me in this look. Oh, didn't actually. There's still two units left over there. So I lost that energy while as well. From my perspective, I am struggling with the energy as we know, as we know already. And I've only got two up and running right now. I feel like I've got like two power plants hidden around somewhere. But I don't see where they are. But yeah, I think Infensia spotted my navy units not too far, or not too long from now. And he does try and take them out. But I just think it's great that I stopped his trade economy there. And I did go for another rocket here because I've been on the defense for quite a while here. And I was worried that he's building up quite a lot of structures in this area. But anyway, I do spot the artillery just in time and my strikers are able to save it with one quick volley of missiles and taken out but that is scarily close to being destroyed over here we've got the uh, the navy still trying to take out units as some random strays are coming over but i probably should have taken the other side i can take out the structures from that side probably this way around so i can take out the units or the production structures. But anyway, it looks like I've managed to win the defense here, probably with strikers as well, being a lot of support in this area. But as I'm building up some infantry as well, they can help with the fight in this area. It looks like Infendi is willing to attack once again. He's got quite a large force coming in through the shadows there. And usually when he attacks, he's attacking in two places. But is he going for anywhere else? So I've got two navy yards on this side as well, so I can start working on what's going on there. 
I noticed that he's been using a lot of um, submarines. So here I've been focusing on destroyers to try and take those guys out. On this side, he's got his submarine sneaking in there, trying to take out another energy well. But I am on that, and I am trying to sort out my energy situation. It is slow progress, but it is happening. Because if he takes out my energy, the mid or the middle of these are really going to struggle when it comes to defending this island. They really need to be on top of that energy just so I have enough units in this area. And I switched the bombers out for strikers. I've got my rocket on the move, flying over the top of my forces there. I don't plan to invade, but I've already set a strike command for my strikers, which is why I chose strikers in the end. Because I didn't actually know the bombers can't use a strike command. But a city can survive a nuke, so my strikers are going to come in and finish off the job. And now that my submarines are gone, this was actually probably quite important for me. So is anything happening anywhere else? And Penzi is defending up in the north here as my units come through that section. I have stored a lot of units around this city, especially as it nearly died. My strikers are finishing off the job there. Does that boat make it in there? Are you going to be able to give him a go? No, it goes down. Did that boat just automatically die? Because I don't think they normally do. We still have these boats over here. I think it was within close enough range. The ship actually went down with the docks. So after that hit, let's have a look at the economy. So he's been hitting my... my I, I've been hitting his economy, whereas he's been hitting my energy. So he's got 90 energy. Well, free energy while productions, should I say. And 1,300 in economy. From my perspective, I've got 1,500 in economy. I do have some extra energy storage, but I really don't know where that's coming from. So, yeah. I suppose now it makes sense. Because we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. Which 4 times 30 is 120, so that makes sense now. But I just seem to have some extras that I wasn't sure where it was coming from. Over here, it looks like the submarines are really trying to get to my energy well, and I'm I really don't want to lose my energy wells anymore because they cost a lot to reproduce or construct you know what I mean over here we've got the artillery force which I feel like is quite strong at this point that I would be able to take over the island and we have a large defense force coming in I don't think this is actually a black line you can see they're not actually digging in so this is an orange line it's just a visual glitch and my artillery are lining up in front of it Pretty much outranging them, apart from obviously the artillery that's here. That's just one unit. So this must be a blue line then, not an orange line, otherwise these units were coming to attack. So I think he's trying to like sort of curve around me and trap me in a circle, but I think I've got too many artillery for that in this section here. I should be fine for a little while. Just trying to make sure I don't miss stuff. It looks like I tried to do an invasion over here. Luckily, I've got some units on standby to protect that area. And although my rocket was fired, I don't have another one in production. I probably should have just taken that off now. Like, completely deletes it. I do have this rocket silo here, do I? Did I use that to defend this location? I can't remember. Either way, I probably don't need that rocket down there but I'd keep this one here because it just has a lot more range and I do stop with some units here to take out uh, the transport boat there and that does allow me to spot these units coming in through this section which I probably should have done them that way to try and deal with just in case over here I send in my air units just to check out what's going on to see if I can take out any more of his eco And it does look like the SAM take out one of my units. I don't think I can see the SAM, otherwise it... Oh, these bombers can now. They probably would have targeted it on their way in. So only now can they see these units. And I don't think bombers are that good at taking out SAM, but they have taken out two. So maybe they'll be able to survive in this area for a little longer and do some more damage. 
take out another Sam, so Infensia only has one Sam unit on this island now. My destroyers and cruisers here are taking out the navy that's in this area. And they're going to go for the other side of this eco, because I didn't want him to rebuild here. And if he did, I wanted to stop him from having this side of it instead. Anything to slow him down. And because he put up a defence in the forest here, I decided to just send my units across this way. And any reinforcements can go in through that way. But he does take off the defensive line and he is sending his units my way instead. And we are getting to the point at the end of the match. So, I'm not sure how much longer is left. I think we've only got like five minutes left. So I will try and explain a few things just now. At the time when I was battling this, it was about half two. I had to pick my kids up from school. Not long, you know, getting close to the end of the match. So I did ask him, or I did mention that I'd have to go soon. And he offered to leave because he thought that he was losing. And that he... Um, thought that if he could win, it would take him a very long time, and I think that he could still win from this, but yes, it would take him a long time. So, we'll have a look at the economy and the energy, I'll let you guys decide, let me know in the comments below if you think Infenzio would have won this. So this is my stats right now, I've got 1,500, you can see the situation of the units, 1,500 eco, I've got energy production of about 40, 48, 50. As I'm currently using it, the submarines do come in and take out some structures here, which leave me... Oh no, those are my submarines, I think. No, they're not. I am attacking them. They're not attacking my doctors. They are. I'm just blind. But yeah, he is still doing harassment tactics, and they're being very successful. I'm trying to send in some units here, but I run out of energy. Which also does leave these submarines in this section. Anyway, from Infensia's side of things... He has 1,100 economy and is slowly being harassed in the long term. He's losing this island over here right now. So we do decide to just call it a day. And I will speed up this now that I've said that. So we've got these units moving in this section here. And we have this section here where the units are coming out and they're they're literally moving towards my my cruiser and they're going to take me out right now because uh, I think I left my units there and he just streamed in the submarines and took me out slowly. And I think my bombers were actually able to take out the structures here. I could have probably kept them on for a bit and sent more over. Anyway, Infensia did give up for me, but I'll let you guys decide if I actually deserve that win because I kind of had to call it off early, so I kind of feel bad for that. As you can see by the Empire value, it is slowly diminishing over time, but so is mine. And we'll have a look at Treasury. So this is where he was attacking me a lot and harassing me, and I just ended up with loads of money in my bank before I spent it all. Not energy capacity, we want energy income. Do we have energy income? Energy? I think it's just how much is stored. Yeah, so it, like, it was dropping a lot. He still had a lot of energy. He used it rarely, but when he did, he was trying to harass me with his submarines or his uh, navy units. Capital upkeep structures. So I, I had more structures than he did. I suppose that makes sense. As you can see, units lost worth. I did manage to take out 23,000 worth of units and 10,000 worth of structures. And I was on about half of that with structures and just, just over half with units but anyway let me know in the comments what you guys think and i will see you with another video there are two on screen right now feel free to click one and i'll see you there thanks for watching